everybody. Today is day two of uh, ankle sprains, obviously not a very bad sprain that I've done. Um, I went for x-rays yesterday which showed that there was no fracture. It's very important to make sure that you haven't had a fracture when you've dislocated or oh, um, hurt your ankle. And you can see it is still quite swollen, I don't know if you can see from there, but it is still quite significantly swollen, got a nice big fat chunky, chunky thing. And the swelling and has even come to the medial side of my ankle here with a bit of bruising. The bruising is not so bad. If you break your ankle, the bruising will be far more intense. It will almost be like a black bruising and you know for sure you've um, hurt your bone. Now the important thing about um, using or treating your ankle, do you want to put ice on, which is what I did yesterday and this helps significantly for the swelling in my foot. But the problem that we experience now is with walking with crutches and that, your muscles become, especially your peroneus muscle here, becomes very tight up here and even my bum has been cramping. So you do want to go and see the physio as soon as possible to help with the pains caused from using crutches. So um, you get your bum that goes into a spasm, your legs that cramp, your peroneus that's cramping. So I'm going to just use a um, hypervolt to loosen up my muscles here. My bum is very sore from jumping on crutches yesterday. And, um, but the pain is so much better that I can actually walk normally today on my ankle, which is fabulous. So, and that's just from doing the ice. If I didn't do the icing uh, immediately after my injury, I would have had a very swollen ankle and this would have caused more problems than anything else. So, um, we're just going to release here. So, go to your physio, they should release your entire leg. Because often the problem that you sit with after an ankle injury is not the ankle problem, but the peroneal problem from the spasms from jumping on crutches and having pain there. So it's very important to loosen up these bits. And if you've had an ankle sprain and you've probably fallen after you've stepped in a ditch or whatever you've done, your rest of your body will also be sore. I found that my entire body was sore after the fall. My spine was sore, my back was sore, my arms were sore. My bum was cramping, my calves were cramping, my feet were cramping. So I'm making sure that I'm loosening all the bits up. It's a bit difficult to stretch the ankle because the, the ligament is still sore. Um, you do want to start getting full range of movement as soon as possible. Now remember the first three days that you have an injury um, is swelling is being created. Only after day four slash five will your um, ligament that's been injured actually start growing on. So the first three days are just inflammation. But in that time, you must make sure that you're doing up-down movements, just up-down movements, not in-out movements, so that your calf doesn't get tight and your ankle doesn't get stiff. All right, so it also helps by moving it up and down. It helps to improve the blood circulation to the feet so that it can help reduce the swelling. So um, as soon as I'm finished with the vibration here, I will go and I'll put an ice pack on because I'm actually working with quite a few people today. So I need to, in between when I've got space, treat my own body. Um, if you're going to ignore it, you're going to be sitting with the problem for way longer than it needs to be. An ankle injury within um, three weeks, you should have full range of movement, no pain, no swelling and at that stage you will be doing um, starting with your normal exercise regime of um, strengthening and endurance exercises um, from day three we will gently do um, stretching of the area that has been damaged so that when the ligaments do grow back they actually grow in the correct alignment to maintain full range of movement and uh, what you'll also start doing as soon as possible is working on your balance so standing on one leg so that um, I won't do it yet, I must wait for day four. So the first three days are inflammation, so that's where you just pamper it with ice and you treat the rest of your body that's aching and you take your anti-inflammatories for the swelling and pain pills for the rest of the body's pain. So once you've done that, you will then start doing heat on the ankle. So um, I, won't, I won't do it quite yet in the first week, but the second week we can definitely use heat or you can do alternating hot and cold baths. And then um, within day four, we'll start stretches to uh, make sure it helps. And then we'll start doing balance exercises on day four as well, which is standing on one leg. And then next week, after the first week, we'll start doing, um, depending on the pain, or well, my pain is minimal, but 
generally with the people you depend on the pain and their progression but we'll start doing um, maybe a little bit of cycling just to help get the range of movement back. Now if it was broken that would be a totally different scenario you'd have to wait six weeks for the bone to reattach itself and then only would you start with the stretching and the exercises. Now if you've had surgery on the leg um, to stabilize the ankle you will still be immobilized for three to six weeks where you're not allowed to put any weight on the leg but you will immediately on day one literally when you wake up from surgery start working on lifting your foot up and down and then um, treating the ligaments taking them in and out on day four um, to make sure that you get um, your ankles moving normally on that way all right so this is already feeling a lot lot better um, feeling it's nicer down here and the leg is feeling good this also helps significantly for cellulite now if you've got um, a lot of cramping in that it means that the muscles are actually going into spasm and uh, the cramping will create cellulite so we need to just make sure that we are loosening all those things I think my bum is very sore from the fall I had Lucky it could have been a lot worse, you know, if I'd broken my foot we'd be in a lot different scenario. I've also got a very high pain threshold, so um, on a scale of 0 to 10 to give my ankle a bit of pain, it's a zero for me at the moment. My bum is more sore than my ankle. So, and even that with, without me, with, when I'm doing this, it's about a 1 out of 10. Um, but otherwise I don't feel it, it's only when I'm doing this. Now it's not just this leg that is affected, it is also the other leg, because this other leg has been cramping something terrible. So I will do the same muscles on the other leg. Your body always works bilaterally, so that means on both sides. So if the one side is injured, the same muscles on the other side will go into spasm to help compensate for the pain. So when I treat people, I always like to work basically the whole body really, because um, this will affect your train tracks so when i talk about train tracks you've got six of them it's how the body is linked from one muscle to the next through fascia which is a uh, little white um, fleshy things and um, the fascia links the skin to the muscle and the muscle to the bone so it all gets linked all the way through and if that muscle gets tight it will influence the fascia and then the fascia will pull the skin tight causing the cellulite but it will influence the whole area so if i take my ankle that's been injured i've told you that after an ankle injury your peroneal on the side of the leg will be affected but that's not the only thing that will be affected it will affect the entire lateral line so it will go from my ankle up my peroneal up my itb into my butt which is my glutes medius and minimus then it will come up the side of my ribs here and now you were making it worse by working with crutches it will go down my arms and affect my arms so you have to work and stretch the whole area you can stretch your body out um, letting the ankle just relax um, so that will come last is, is working on the ankle but you must work your whole body just to release things now there's basically six things you need to do for an ankle injury or for any injury for that matter the first thing is you've got to get the inflammation down okay so that's where the anti-inflammatories come from if you've got a sensitive stomach that has a tendency to get ulcers you will um, use ice okay but you use ice as a given anyways so um, you use ice for the swelling and you've got to get that swelling 100% down if you're going to sit with your foot down all day because you've now gone back to work and you're sitting at a desk or you're standing all day your foot is going to swell something terrible you've got to get that swelling down so at night you have to sleep with your foot on a pillow and elevate it it will be sore to have the blankets on your leg at night because that pressure is just too much on the ligaments so then you just sleep with your, blank, your, your leg outside the blankets and um, you put ice around the leg um, regularly throughout the day to help release it if you have to go back to work you must sit with your leg up on a chair next to you not let it hang on the floor because the blood will sink down and it will start throbbing and it will take much longer to fix that foot than if you just kept it up the second thing that we need to do is you need to get full range of movement so that's why i said on on within the first day already i've already started doing with the uh, flexion and extension of the foot so lifting my foot up and down and I can feel my calf is tight now that is important to make sure you get full ankle range of movement 
and on day three I will start doing in and out. I'm not going to do it too much now because it is the ligament on the outside that's been injured. And um, so that's range of movement. You've got to get full range of movement as soon as possible. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to start doing um, uh, proprioception and balance that we're going to do quite quickly. That's standing on one leg so that you can um, keep your balance and your body knows where your ankle is in relation to the rest of the body. When you damage your ligaments or break a bone, your proprioceptive um, things are inside those muscles. So when they get torn, it loses its whole proprioception and it can't tell the, the brain where it is. So then that's where you lose and you don't know where you, your foot is and then you drag your foot or it doesn't lift or you stub your toe on uh, rocks or things like that. You start doing stupid things or you fall over more regularly because you've lost your balance. So that's the third thing we're wanting to do. Then we want to start doing um, endurance exercise and strengthening exercise. So endurance is number four and strengthening is number five. And that would be walking on your toes, walking on your heels, walking on an um, elevated little um, brick path or on a little sill somewhere, you know, a little raised ledge somewhere outside where it's safe that you're not going to fall off. Um, it's um, doing a bit of cycling, um, any, anything that you know, walking, cycling, swimming is very good for your ankle, especially to get that last bit of range of movement because you're kicking against resistance of the water. And, um, and then the last thing is when, when you experience an injury, regardless of what injury it is, your body will have released adrenaline because of the shock of the situation. Now, if you don't go through a shiver state after you've had that injury or accident, your body will store the adrenaline as an emotion in the area that be, has been injured or somewhere else in the body. So what we need to do is you can do a tremor release exercise where you actually activate a tremor to release the, the stress of the experience, focusing on the injury that you did. So when you think about the injury and you activate the tremor release exercise, your body will release those chemicals that were used during the injury or incident or shock or whatever it is that's happened to you. So um, very important to do that. Um, that we'll do later for me. I did go through a tremor after the injury. So I know I've done a little bit of a release. It wasn't a very strong tremor, but it was, it was a tremor and I did let it tremor away. It was usually like your jaw goes a little bit of a blah, 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 like, like it's cold. So we did have that, so that was fine. But um, I'll do it anyway, just to make sure it has no leftover effects. All right. So, yes, good luck with your injuries and do take care of your body because if you're not going to take care of it and do what your physiotherapist tells you to do or if you can't get to a physiotherapist, that's why I'm doing these YouTube videos so that I can help as many people out there to heal themselves because um, you can't function properly if you hurt. So, good luck with that and nice seeing you guys again. I'll tune in again um, later in the week when I start doing my stretching exercise and, and other proprioceptive things so that you can see um, what's happening. Keep well. Bye.